In this video, we'll be talking about linear congruences and its solution. So let us first define what do I mean by linear congruence. So we can say that an equation or the congruence of the form ax congruent to b modulo n, this is called a linear congruence. So this is called a linear congruence. And we can see that we have a single variable x, so whose degree is 1. So we call this as linear congruence, just as the way we define the linear equations. And now obviously we are interested in knowing, but for what value of x this equation is holding true. So this means for solution, we are always interested in knowing what is the value for x0 that satisfy this congruess ax0 is congruent to b modulo n. And if this congress is holding, that means n divide a x naught minus b. This should hold. Now, to understand the solution part of this linear congress, let us take the theorem. It states that linear congress a x congruent to b modulo n has a solution if and only if d divides b, where d is the GCD of a and n. And if d divides b, then it has d mutually incongruent solution modulo n. So now we have two assertions to prove. So first, let's prove the statement, which is if and only if. And to prove this uh, theorem first assertion, I will be using the Diffentine equation. So the linear Diffentine equation is given as ax plus by equal to c. In my earlier video, we have done the linear Diffentine equation and I have also talked about the solution of this linear Diffentine equation and also if we can find a particular solution, then we can find there other possible solution also. So we have this condition that this has a solution if and only if d divide c and where d is the gcd of a and b so that guarantees us about the solution and it says d divide c in the second condition we say that if x naught and y naught these are particular solutions if these are particular solution then all the other solution we can find out for x is equal to x naught plus b by d times t and y is equal to y naught minus a by d times t so these are the other possible solution now this proof i have already done i have added the link in the description for the detailed proof of the diffentine equation the statement that i have written here this has a solution if and only if this now i'm going to use this theorem to prove the current theorem and in this case what is given to us is we can see that we have been given ax congruent to b modulo n so this has an equivalent form i can write this as ax minus b is equal to n times y where y belong to integers or i can write this as ax minus ny equal to b so now this is same as a linear diffentine equation so that means this has a solution if and only if the gcd of a and n this will divide b and in the statement we have considered that this has a gcd d so this divide b so this statement is true that it has a solution if and only if d divides b now we want to understand that it has d mutually incongruent solution now to prove the second assertion that it has d mutually incongruent solution let us first understand what do we i mean by incongruent solution so to have the incongruent solution let me to consider a linear congress so in that linear congress let's consider this as 3x is congruent to 9 modulo 12 and let's consider a particular solution of this linear congress this has x naught equal to 3 so we see that 3 into 3 this is congruent to 9 modulo 12 so this is satisfied because 12 divides uh, 9 is congruent to 9, 12 divides 0. And we also see that there is another solution if I consider x0 is equal to minus 9. So this means 3 into minus 9, this is congruent to 9 modulo 12. This also satisfies the statement because 12 divides 36. So this will be minus 27 congruent to 9. And if I take 9 on the other side, we'll get 36 so 12 divide 36 so that is also true now look at these two solutions now these two solutions are not incongruent because we see that 3 is congruent to minus 9 modulo 12 so they are also true because if i take minus 9 on this side 12 divide minus 12 so this is also true so that means these two solutions are congruent to each other they are not incongruent and we are interested in knowing what are incongruent solution so this theorem says how many incongruent solution we should have we should have d mutually incongruent solutions modulo n now we know what are the possible solutions from the diffentine equation only so let's have 
it has a solution from the statement let's assume that it has particular solution so now let ax congruent to b modulo n has a solution if and only if d divide b and assuming that x naught y naught be the particular solution of this so i can assume now that x and y they are all other solution now we are interested in knowing the incongruent solution and for this when we say that t belongs to z so now let us take so choose t takes the values t takes values 0 1 2 up till d minus 1 in this case if i fix the t value among this possibility so in that case x will this solution x will come out as x naught whenever t is a 0 so you can see that if i substitute x is equal to x naught plus n by d times t if i substitute t is equal to 0 so 0 into n by uh, d is 0 so x is same as x naught so that is why i have written here x naught this is first possibility when t is equal to 1 in this case when t is equal to 1 this second possibility is that it is x naught plus n by d times 1 in the second possibility we have x naught plus 2 n by d and so on the last possibility is x naught plus d minus 1 n by d now for these t values i want to show that these are incongruent to each other this is the first claim so we have the first claim that the above integers are incongruent so above integers are incongruent modulo n so now to say to justify the statement that they are incongruent modulo n so on contrary i'll assume that suppose they are congruent to each other so if i assume that they are congruent to each other so i'll take x naught by uh, x naught plus n by d times t1 this is congruent to x naught plus n by d times t2 modulo n and i'll take now this t1 and t2 this lies between 0 and d minus 1 because t can take the possibility it the least value it had 0 and the largest value it has d minus 1 and without loss of generality i'll assume that t1 is smaller than t2 so now in this case now look at this expression from the previous we can subtract x naught from both sides so we have n by d times t1 this is congruent to n by d times t2 modulo n and now we can do the cancellation also but for the cancellation we remember this law that if we have ca is congruent to cb modulo n and if i want to cancel c from both sides then a should be congruent to b modulo n and here it should be divided by gcd of c and n so now in this situation i want to cancel n by d from both sides so this is same as t1 is congruent to t2 modulo n upon gcd of n by d comma n so now we see that what is the gcd of n by d comma n and that is same as of course n by d so you can see that this is smaller uh, n by d is actually an integral value because d is acting as a divisor of n because we already know that the G d we have considered as gcd of a and n initially so this means d divides a and d divides n so this is an integer so gcd of this quantity is n by d so this is same as t1 congruent to t2 modulo n upon n by d and hence i can write this as t1 congruent to t2 modulo d and that means d divides t1 minus t2 now this is not possible because we have considered that t1 t2 are smaller than d so both t1 is smaller than t2 this is less than d minus 1 so this was a selection of uh, the choices of t1 t2 so this is not possible the only possibility is that t1 minus t2 has to be equal to 0 or i say that t1 is equal to t2 so that means whenever we have said that these two are distinct so they have to be incongruent to each other so they are not congruent to each other and now let us look for the t which is belonging to integer for the other possibility after d minus 1 when we say because we have considered here this as a finite possibility for t t lies between 0 to d minus 1 what happens when t takes the value d and d plus 1 and so on for the remaining values let's explore now so we claim that for any other solution x naught plus n by d times t whenever t takes the value greater than or equal to d and this has to be congruent modulo n to one of the d integers given in the set this now let's consider that by the division algorithm so using division algorithm 
now what i do is i write t is equal to q d plus r and of course r lies between this strictly value d or i can say r lies between this less than or equal to d minus 1 and of course there exists a quotient and a remainder for this relation whenever i have assumed t is greater than or equal to d now in this case we can consider this as expression so this implies x naught plus n by d times t this is same as x naught plus n by d and the value for t we can uh, take it from here so this is q d plus r so this is same as x naught plus n q because dd get cancelled plus this is n by d times r and we know this is congruent to x naught will remain as it is x naught inside we have modulo n so this means it is a multiple of n so this will be replaced by 0 plus n by d times r so this is same as congruent to x naught plus n by d times r modulo n and we see that now any t so you note down here on the left hand side we have any t and here we have r so these two quantity are congruent so whenever t is greater than so whenever t is greater than or equal to d this will be coming out as congruent to x naught plus n by d times r n by d times r and here r lies between this range so this means only this set gives us the incongruent solution modulo n and in the count these are the d incongruent solutions modulo n so we see that if we count solutions modulo n so this says we counted this is first second and the dth incongruent solution modulo n for the linear congruence and as the consequences of the theorem we have this corollary if the gcd of a n n is equal to one then we know that the linear congruence ax congruent to b modulo n this has a unique solution because now we see the gcd of a n n is equal to one so there there has to be now the value for d is equal to one so there are d incongruent solutions so now there are one incongruent solution or we can say there is a unique solution modulo n now let us consider an example to see this uh theorem so for example i want to solve this 18 x is congruent to 30 modulo 42 now first thing is to know whether this has a solution or not so i must need to check what is the gcd of 18 and 42 so this gcd is 18 and 42 this is 6 and we know 6 divide 30 which is the quantity here so this has a solution so the possibility of finding is the solution and how many possible solution we are going to find we are going to find 6 incongruent solutions so that is what our theorem state in congruent modulo uh, 42 and now for finding the solution let me to try the possible values for x so let's keep this congress again and for x is equal to 1 we see 18 is not congruent to 30 take the possibility x is equal to 2 that is 36 is congruent to 30 it's not possible if x is equal to 3 so again 54 minus 30 modulo 42 this is not satisfied now when x is equal to 4 this satisfy because we see that 18 into 4 is congruent to 30 18 fours are this is 72 this is congruent to 30 modulo 42 and we see that uh, 42 divides this 42 that is 72 minus 30 so this divides so x is equal to 4 act as the initial solution and let me to call this initial solution as x naught once we know that initial solution we can find all other possible solution and for all other possible solution let's apply the formula formula said this is x naught plus n by d times t so here we have identified the x naught that is 4 n is 42 divided by the gcd that is 6 into t and for the incongruent solution we know what are the possibilities for t t lies between 0 1 up till 1 less than so it was 0 1 up till d minus 1 so that is how we counted d incongruent solution total number of so here it is 5 because the gcd is 6 so this is same as 4 plus 7 into t now keep on taking the different different values so x is possible 4 when t is equal to 0 when t is equal to 1 i'll consider this as 11 when t is equal to 2 we will consider this as 18 and so on 25 32 39 modulo 42 so these are six incongruent solution so we when we say incongruent solution you can see that four is not congruent to 11 modulo 42 and similarly the others will not be congruent to each other